I would like to read to you, first of all, from Mark, 13th chapter of the book of Mark. If you will open up your Bible, Mark chapter number 13, and I am going to be reading there just two verses and then one verse in Psalms chapter 19. Thirteenth chapter of Mark's gospel, verse number one, the Bible said, And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Psalms chapter 19 and verse number 9. Bible said through the psalmist, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. And from that correlation of scriptures tonight, I want to preach to you on the subject, the judgments of the Lord are true. The judgments of the Lord. I'm not here to scare you tonight. I'm just simply here with a message from the Lord to try to reason with you and I in this time and era that we live in. Where from politicians to sports stars, everybody manages to dodge the bullet. Everybody manages to escape and not have to pay the consequences of their sin, of their wrongdoing, and the powerful effect that that has upon all of us to get the idea That some of the things we read about in the Bible, maybe, just maybe, I too can escape if I live contrary to the Word of God. But I'm here to preach to you the judgments of the Lord are true. They are true. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. God, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, Savior, for your help, for your strength, for your anointing. For your beautiful spirit, O God, to rest, I pray, Savior, upon me now, God, as I strive to be obedient unto you and that that you have put in my heart. I'm praying, God, throughout the entire continuity of this camp meeting, Lord, let a special touch of your spirit be upon the ministry of the Word of God. We are your people, O God. We are striving to be the bride that you want us to be, Lord. And I'm praying, God, in Jesus' name, enable us, oh God, to understand and believe your word, God. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word, your word shall never pass away, God. I trust you now in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. God bless you. You may be seated. The text that we read in Mark chapter 13 is the occasion where the disciples of Jesus Christ are standing and they are looking and beholding a marvelous phenomenon, a wonder of the world, if you please, that uh, very, very few people had had the privilege of seeing the magnificence of Herod's temple that had been built there. They were awestruck by it, seeing and and the commenting about the grandeur of it and seeing the size of the stones that was built by it. And in the process of their amazement of that temple that is there, the Scripture said Jesus used it as an occasion for a little teaching lesson to reinforce in their mind and our mind from now until eternity, that when God says something, it will come to pass. 
No matter how absurd it seems, no matter how impossible it stretches your mind and mine and our imaginations to think that 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 just cannot happen. It's impossible. You see, Herod the Great was a Jew with one foot loyal to Rome and the other foot loyal to Jerusalem. And there was a divided sense of loyalty within him. But the roots and the upbringing that beckoned him to the Jewish faith caused him to build that temple that was second only to Solomon's temple built there in Jerusalem. It was built over a period of many years. And if you will study Josephus and other historians, you will find out that that temple was still under construction when Jesus, at age 12, went up to Jerusalem with his mother and father. It was something that he, as a wide-eyed boy, was able to look uh, and wonder about what was going on. I'm sure you've done the same thing as I have. You've visited old home places and gone back to sites that were familiar to you as a child. And uh, you end up saying, wow. I always envisioned it to be a whole lot bigger than this. I always thought that it, uh, it it had a little more pizzazz than what it really has. But Jesus had been there as a young boy and looked upon the actual construction and how they were doing it and putting it all together. It wasn't something that we think in terms of this nice large tabernacle that is had. Here, the Temple Mount, my friend, covered the equivalent of 15 football fields. And it was a very, very large place uh, where this temple had been constructed, erected for the glory of God. And the Bible comments uh, about the size of the stones uh, that were there. If you've ever been privileged to go and visit Palestine, you've stood beside the Wailing Wall and you've looked at them gigantic stones that are still in place. It's not the temple, but it is the Wailing Wall that was one side of that that temple mount that was there. One of those stones that's in place on that wall, they have calculated to weigh 500. 160 tons. Uh, 2,000 years later, with all our intelligence and industrial age, uh, man has yet to build uh, a crane uh, that is powerful enough uh, to lift a stone that weighs uh, 560 ton. Uh, But that was just one of the stones that were there. And all of them had been erected and built uh, and put in place. Uh, And they tried to explain how they think uh, that it was built and how they think uh, that they got the stones all in place. Uh, But it it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out uh, that it was an amazing spectacle uh, to stand beside those stones uh, and wonder how did this happen. How could something this magnificent uh, have been built uh, and there virtually immovable? Uh, The Wailing Wall has stood through 2,000 years uh, of earthquakes and other natural disasters that have come uh, and not budged one of those stones. Uh, That's why it makes uh, the pronouncement of judgment uh, that Jesus made to that temple uh, seem utterly impossible. Uh, He looked at them mouths gapping uh, and he said, boys, if you think this is something, uh, he said, let me pronounce uh, a judgment of the Lord uh, that is going to come upon this temple. Uh, He said it's coming uh, and not one stone is going to be left upon the other. I'm sure they gulped, swallowed hard a few times and said, earthquakes, 
can't budge these stones. Nothing that we know of has the capability of knocking these things over. And you are telling us that not only is the temple going to be broken down, but it's not going to be broken down like all of the other ruins and antiquities that we have seen where there's part of a wall left standing. Where there's part of a structure that's there. You, you mean, you're telling us, Jesus, you're pronouncing that judgment. Uh, that when that day comes, uh, not one of these stones uh, are going to be left on top of another. Uh, he said, that's right. They spoke back uh, and said, how can these things be? How in the world uh, could anything like that uh, ever come to pass? Uh, we, 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 we don't want to doubt your word, Lord, uh, but we, we cannot rationalize how that a judgment of that magnitude uh, and that severity uh, could ever come uh, that would move these stones like they were dominoes and scatter them. All over the temple grounds. Let me tell you, friend, you and I would do ourselves a favor if we would get inside of the Word of God and study every place in that Bible where God pronounces a curse. Amen. To get our nose in that book uh, and say, God, I want to read it. Uh, I want to study it. Uh, because if I can't comprehend it uh, and it boggles my mind, uh, I've still got proof in the Word of God uh, that the judgments of the Lord are true. Uh, and if you said it, brother, uh, look out. That settles it. Uh, it is going uh, to come to pass. Uh, when when God wanted to train the children of Israel uh, about the blessings and the curses of God, uh, He took them out and divided the tribes, uh, put half at Mount Ebal, put the other half over at Mount Gerasim. And there in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, amen, He uh, explained to them uh, about the curses uh, and the blessings of the Lord. Uh, I'm not here to preach to you a negative message, I want to tell you, those blessings of the Lord are equally true. Hallelujah. If God said it, uh, you can go to the bank on it, friend. Uh, hey, man, you do that, uh, and the Almighty God is going to bless you. Uh, but we've gone to seed in Christianity today uh, with the prosperity doctrine uh, and all of the blessings, the blessings, the blessings uh, that are promised to be fulfilled in our life. Uh, amen. Let me tell you, uh, as sure as the blessings come, uh, the curses will also come uh, according to God's Word. Uh, the very first curse that's ever mentioned that I can find in the Bible is an amazing thing. Because with all of the emerging technologies that are happening in this century that we live in, uh, people think, well, God, uh, God really didn't write about this and that and the other and all of those things that are there. But the very first curse that God pronounced, uh, amen, upon all of mankind uh, that I can find is Deuteronomy 7.26, uh, where the Lord said that, Hey man, you better not uh, bring a cursed thing uh, into your house. <laughs> Whoa, uh, what a God. Uh, he looked all the way down through the annals of time. Uh, he said, I got technology uh, and the tiger by the tail. Uh, nobody uh, is going to get ahead of me. Uh, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, he said, you bring a cursed thing into your house. Uh, he said, the problem is uh, that you uh, will become just like it. Hallelujah. Now, there's a lot of people that have tried to prove that that judgment of the Lord is not true. 
There's a whole lot, amen, of oneness, apostolic people that have tried to dodge that bullet uh, and thought they got by with it successfully uh, of saying, I can do it uh, and keep from becoming uh, just like it. Uh, Let me tell you, friend, uh, some of you are getting the shocks of your life, I'm sure, and in living in settings like this, other than California where I live, where now all of a sudden you're seeing, uh, amen, that it's suddenly so popular for guys to wear earrings uh, and to walk around with them in their ear. Uh, Hey, just ten years ago, uh, amen, you would not see that. Uh, Amen. That was something uh, that was way out of limits. Uh, You know what happened about ten years ago? Uh, Amen. The cursed thing uh, that had been brought into the house, uh, the stars started putting it on, uh, started saying it looks cool. Uh, amen. It's right. It's okay uh, for guys to do this. Uh, that's all right. Uh, ten years later, my friend, uh, society is just like it. Uh, they're just like it. Uh, amen. God said it. Uh, it came to pass uh, exactly like He said it would be. Uh, if you bring it there, uh, you're going to become just like it. Uh, some of you are saying, and no, 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 you keep it up and your sons are going to become just like them. You keep it up and your daughters are going to become just like them because the judgments of the Lord, they are true. You might not understand how it happens. But God said that's how it happens, friend. It's a curse from God. Uh, It's a judgment from the Lord. Uh, You will become just like it. Uh, You think homosexuality is bad now? You think lesbianism is bad now? Uh Uh-huh. Hang around. If the Lord uh, doesn't come uh, in the next ten years, they're just now introducing on the tube. uh, Amen. Open mouth kisses. uh, Amen. Between two lesbians. uh, Between two homosexual men. uh, Stick around my friend, uh, those that want to keep trying uh, to disprove God's curse, uh, amen, ten years from now, uh, amen, they're going to be just like them, uh, they're going to be just like them, uh, amen, it's going to happen uh, exactly the way uh, that God said it was. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm telling you, the judgments of the Lord uh, are true. Hallelujah. They are true. Uh, Amen. The Bible teaches us, uh, Cursed be the man that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. Can I tell you, God hates a hypocrite. God hates a hypocrite. Hallelujah. God has mercy upon sinners, uh, but God promised cursings uh, upon the hypocrite. Uh, why, why are you saying this, Brother White? Uh, because our churches today uh, are full, uh, are full of people uh, that have seared their conscience uh, to the place, uh, amen, that they know they're living in sin. Uh, they know... Uh, that they've committed immorality. Uh, They know the actions, uh, but yet they'll still uh, come up on the platform uh, and sing and play and participate uh, in leadership. Uh, Amen. I promise you, friend, uh, it ain't me that wrote that curse. Uh, It's the Almighty God uh, that said, Cursed be the man uh, that doeth the work of the Lord uh, deceitfully. Uh, Hallelujah. I try to teach it in my church at home. Uh, hey Amen. Uh, and, and I'm sure it, they don't all obey it. But I try to teach it to them. Uh, hey Amen. That if there's sin in your life, uh, hey Amen. You'd be better off going through uh, a nuclear power plant uh, with a leaking, uh, hey Amen, reactor uh, and exposing yourself uh, to the sure.
your judgment uh, that that radiation would be uh, than for you to keep on singing in the choir with sin in your life. uh, Than for you to keep on being an usher with sin in your life. uh, Because the judgments of the radiation uh, are only temporal. uh, But the judgments of God, uh, they are eternal. uh, And God promised uh, a curse upon anyone. Anyone, anyone that was bold and brazen enough to do the work of the Lord hypocritical. Amen. Oh, God, we we need a revival uh, of the fear of the Lord in our midst. Uh, We need a revival, uh, amen, of exceedingly trembling uh, like they did at Mount Sinai. Uh, We need a revival, uh, amen, like the elders at Bethlehem, uh, trembling when Samuel uh, came walking up uh, to the gates of the city. Uh, We need a revival of understanding uh, that the Judgments of the Lord are true. They're true. They're true. They're true. You can't hire a big enough lawyer to get you off the hook. You can't hope to persuade the jurors. There is no jury system with heaven. Uh, Amen. Off on some glitch uh, or some technicality. Uh, Friend, this black back book uh, is forever settled in heaven. You're not going to mock it. I'm not going to mock it. We're not going to get by with it. But there upon Mount Ebal, he gave to them the curses. Of Deuteronomy 27. Amen. He promised them a curse if they involve themselves in idolatry. He said, I'm telling you, if you get to worshiping other gods, even in a secret place, God said, I'm going to bring a curse upon you. It's coming your way. You mark it down. Amen. Oh, thank God for pure apostolic young people. Uh, Amen. That their idols are not movie stars. Uh, Their idols are not sports stars. Uh, Their idols are not, uh, amen, the things of this world uh, that involve them in idolatry. Uh, Thank God for that. Uh, Thank God, uh, amen, for elders uh, among us that their idols are not money. Uh, It's not bank accounts. Uh, It's not the greed of this world. Uh, It's not the things uh, because there's a curse that God promised would come your way and my way if we involved ourselves in idolatry. He said, chapter 27 of Deuteronomy, verse number 16, he said, there's another area of curse that I don't want you to forget about. He said, and that is a curse for those that disrespect their parents. Can I preach to you just a little bit? Can I preach to you just a little bit here? I'm not just talking to children here. I'm telling you, the plague of this uh, goes all the way through the 20s and the 30s uh, and into the 40s nowadays. Uh, And I even know people in their 50s uh, that are so disrespectful uh, to the honoring. Let me tell you, friend, uh, that's one of the ten pillars that the whole thing is built upon, uh, is honoring your father uh, and your mother. Amen. Uh, But the Lord Lord said in chapter 27, uh, verse number 16, uh, he said to them, Cursed uh, be he that setteth light uh, by his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, uh, Amen. Uh, we're living in a terrible, terrible society where the national heroes uh, are Bart Simpson uh, and Beavis and the other dingbat uh, that want to do their very best uh, to show how disrespectful uh, you can possibly be uh, toward your mom, uh, toward your dad, uh, how much you can mock them, uh, how much you can make fun of them, uh, how old-fashioned uh, in the dinosaur era that they live in. Uh, oh, you better be careful. Uh, hey, man, this generation uh, doesn't understand this Bible. Uh, this Bible says you got a curse coming down the pike if you make light of your mother or your father. God said, I, I'm going to curse you. It doesn't matter if mama heard you. It doesn't matter if daddy heard you. God said, I saw it. I heard it. And I'm going to curse you. 
Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pardon me, but I feel it strong on me here tonight. Uh, amen. Uh, what kind of a society is it? Uh, amen. Where to get your little 12 year old girl uh, an aspirin at school, uh, they have to have a written note from you. Uh, but they can take that same girl down uh, and get her an abortion uh, without you knowing anything about it. Uh, what kind of a mess uh, are we in? Uh, this Bible teaches us, uh, amen, to honor uh, our father and our mother. Uh, that word means they're the heavies in our life. Uh, they're the heavyweights. Uh, I'm telling you, when it's time uh, for you to choose a college, uh, when it's time for you to choose a mate, uh, when it's time for you to choose uh, where you're going to live, uh, your mother and your father, according to the Word of God, uh, are to have heavy influence in your life. But you think you've got by with it. But God said, no. You, you can't figure out how them stones are going to come down, can you, disciples? But you mark it down. If I pronounce the curse, it is going to come to pass. Third area that he mentioned here is he gathered them in that valley, hearing them curses and blessings echo back and forth. He said, you're going to be cursed if you participate in immorality. I know I'm in an apostolic camp meeting, but please, please give me the liberty here tonight. I know we want to hide our head in the sands. And we want to act like we think it doesn't exist among us. I, I know we do. And I'm not here, amen, slamming anybody. I, I'm preaching the burden of my heart here tonight, uh, amen, on this first night. Uh, there is a God that pronounced uh, a curse on anyone, uh, a teenager, a married man, a married woman, uh, anyone that involves himself uh, in immorality. The Almighty God said whatever type of immorality it is... Uh, Mark it down. Uh, there is a curse that is coming your way. Uh, I know society uh, has told you there's ways around all of that. Uh, there's ways around all of that. Uh, and they educate our kids uh, about birth control uh, in the sex education uh, classes and agenda that they have. Uh, and they teach them and pass out condoms uh, and try to convince them uh, that that's a way around the curse. Uh, let me tell you friend. Uh, it might help protect you, uh, amen, from STDs uh, and from AIDS uh, and from unwanted pregnancies. Uh, but God said, I'm telling you, uh, there ain't nothing, there ain't no method, uh, there isn't no device uh, that you can find uh, that's going to protect you from the curse. Uh, I said the curse is coming. Uh, I promise you uh, a curse upon you uh, if you involve yourself uh, in immorality. Uh, your bodies are the temple uh, of God. Uh, you are dedicated uh, and consecrated. Uh, my separated people. And if you behave like the heathen do, regardless of all of the tricks that you thought you did that protected you, and cause you to escape from being caught. There is a God in heaven that still pronounced the curse. And he won't be outfoxed. He won't be outsmarted. Not by you, not by me, not by any other human being that's alive on the planet. He is the sovereign God. 
Oh, what are you saying, Brother White? Uh, I'm just trying to drive. I know for some uh, among us it's too late, uh, but I'm trying to drive it in the hearts uh, of those, uh, amen, that have gone to the boundary of immorality uh, and hesitated uh, and thought, can I do it and get by with it? Uh, Can I do it and get by with it? Uh, Can I do it and toyed with it uh, and played with the idea? I'm here to scream at the top of my lungs uh, to warn you, please don't. Please don't, sister. Please don't, brother. You will not get by with it. The judgments of the Lord are true. They're true. They're true. Your daddy may not have followed through with all the whippings he promised you. And you might have got around your mama on several areas of discipline in your life. But they're not God. And God said, my judgments are true. It will come to pass. Not one of these stones, Jesus said, is going to be left upon another. I have no doubt in my mind that the disciples scratched their heads many years later, after Jesus was already come and gone, as they walked past that temple and thought, he said it. It's still standing. I don't know when, where, or how, but everything else he said came to pass exactly right. One day it's going to happen. It was the year 70 A.D. and the Roman general Titus, historians tell us, when he finally took the siege of the city of Jerusalem, he personally instructed all of his military commanders that were there With the instructions, don't let anybody light a fire within that temple that is there. We're going to conquer the city, mad and angry and taking back vengeance on them that have kept us out for all of this time. But absolutely no kindling of a fire of any sort, torch, anything will be allowed inside of that temple. Many of them didn't know it. But what Titus understood is that those massive stones were made of native limestone. And native limestone is highly explosive. They didn't understand what he was trying to spare from happening there that day. And one of his soldiers in a drunken stupor, a man, went in in revelry inside of that temple to look around with a lit torch when nobody else was around. To see it and mock about the God of the Jews that were there. And accidentally he brushed up against one of the curtains that was there. And it began to catch fire at the smell of the smoke and all of the realizing what was starting to happen. A fire was breaking out uh, up on top of that temple mount. Uh, the historians say uh, that the Roman general himself, uh, he didn't send the fire department. Uh, he didn't send uh, any of his underlings to go do it. Uh, he himself uh, ran to the temple uh, and tried frantically uh, to beat down uh, the flames that were there. Tried to put out the fire, uh, but it was racing, getting away from him. Uh, He knew the inevitable that was fixing to happen. uh, And so he ordered all of his men uh, clear out, not only out of the temple, uh, but completely off of the temple mount. Uh, Get out, get as far as you can. Uh, There's Fixing to be an explosion uh, like you have never seen happen before. Uh, Run as far as you can. Uh, Duck and hide for cover. Uh, Get out of the way. Uh, And as they finally cleared off, uh, the flames intensified uh, until uh, the inevitable happened. Uh, It was the equivalent uh, to a small nuclear uh, explosion uh, that took place. 
place inside uh, of the walls of that temple that day. Uh, and true to the word of God, uh, those stones that no man uh, or no crane uh, or nobody, no earthquake uh, could budge uh, in the explosion. Uh, it blew every last one of them off from on top of the other. And scattered them so far that today you can't even find a remnant of a stone from that temple being there on the temple mount. You say, wow, Brother White. Wow. I'm not here to give you a history lesson. But I'm here to tell you as someone comes to the music. What you read about in the book of Revelation what I read about of the coming judgments of the Lord upon our society, it seems so mind-boggling. We say, how could it be? How could one-third of the earth's population be wiped out just like that? Rather, just because your little peanut brain can't figure it out, you better not start doubting. Because the judgments of the Lord, they're true. They're true. The plagues, the vials, the battle of Armageddon, the blood to the horse's bridle. You can stand at that valley and try to figure out how is it going to happen. But before your human rationale kicks in gear... You better go back to this Bible and say everything he ever said came to pass. Every judgment he ever pronounced happened exactly like he said. Here we stand, the last camp meeting, the 1900s. Here we are looking, peering into the unknown. Trying to figure out what's going to happen. What's coming upon our world. Is it really or are things just going to keep going on like they've always gone on? I beg you in the fear of the Lord. You better relearn the scripture. That the judgments of the Lord are true. It's going to happen. Exactly. Like he said it. Let's stand together. Maybe you're here tonight. This first night of camp meeting. Say, so Brother White, have you come to try to hang me over hell and scare me? No. No. I've come to tell you that there is a merciful God that is waiting around these altars. If you've involved yourself in any of the areas of life that will bring the curses of God upon you, there is a God willing to accept your prayer of repentance. There is a God that loves you that desperately doesn't want you to suffer the eternal judgments of God that are coming. And we have the privilege to seek after God. Say, God, I want to live from this day forward. I want to live a clean life. I want to live a pure life. I want to live in strict obedience to your word. Because even if I think my fancy footwork is going to get me, catch me if you can, out of the wrongs that I've done. I'm only fooling myself. God's judgments are true. They're true. Would you bow your head with me and close your eyes for a moment? As we sing a song of worship. I wonder if there are souls that are here tonight. And be willing to make the trip down the aisle to the altar at camp meeting. 
say, God, I want to straighten up every area of my life. I don't want your judgments to come upon me. Amen. Come as we sing. Lead us, Brother Spirit. Lead me, Lord. I I'll follow. follow. Anyway, oh, yes. You open up yes, Lord. A door. Oh, God. Oh, God. I want to be saved, God. I want to live right. Let your word speak to oh, me. Oh, God. Oh, God. Show me one. Oh, God. I've never seen before. Don't let those curses come upon you, friend. Give your heart, your life to God. Lord, I want to be That's witness. It. That's it. God bless you. You can take God us bless wrong you. and make Oh, it God. Right. Oh, God. If I've let this society affect me. Thinking that I could get by. This door shine down on Wake me up tonight, God. Let Wake me up tonight. Shine through me. Oh, that's it. In the night. That's it. Come on. Let's bow before Him. Let's humble our hearts before Him. Lord, I see oh, you well oh, dying. God. I won't get by. Wounded by the Master. You won't get by of deceit. God, cleanse my heart. Cleanse my spirit. They're groping in the darkness. Wash me, Lord. Blinded by the years. Your word is true, God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's it. And I see Come on. you standing Come near on. me, Lord. Come on. Be the greatest night of your life. The greatest night of your life. In your eyes. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord. I'm going to live according to your word. Jesus, God. shine down on me. Hallelujah. Let your love shine through oh, me. Oh, yes. In the night. Oh, yes. Lead me, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Anywhere you open up. Not going to believe the lie. The enemy is sold to my generation. Going to believe the word of God. Let yes, your I word am. speak to me. Yes, I am, Lord. Show me what I've oh. never seen before. Lord, I want to be a witness. You can take what's wrong and make it right. This door shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. to you here I am here I am Lord here I am Let your spirit move within me. Here I am. Here I am, Lord. 
here I am. so very much this message. Amen. Thank you, Brother White, for preaching to us tonight. All of us. Amen. The judgments of the Lord are sure. Praise God. Amen. This is the kind of service that makes you go home with you. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's stand together tonight and lift our hands, all of us, and God, thank, we God. thank you. Let's thank Him for the word that we've heard tonight. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Amen. 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 I know there's a lot of planning and work that goes into a meeting like this, but. Just this one service is worth everything that we've done. Amen. Just get That's right. Ready. Amen. Thank you again, Brother White. For, amen. I think I can speak for every minister that's here tonight and all the saints. We've been preached to this evening. Praise God. In the morning, 10 o'clock, let's, amen. This, I see a sign out there that says Prayer Garden. This is a house of prayer. I want as many as can to come and pray an hour for the services tomorrow and tomorrow night, 11 o'clock for the gross. Amen. Hallelujah. What a wonderful night tonight. Now, most of the...